Blog Talk Radio. host Davina Shensky and you're listening to Live Without Limits. Today's show is titled Bring on the Chaos. Well what do we mean by chaos? Well for one thing COVID-19 created chaos in the year 2020 and this is the last week before the new year. So what we want to do is talk about how you can bring order to your life. Without order, nothing can exist. Without chaos, nothing can evolve, said Oscar Wilde. When you think of people you know who seem to be living lives of happiness and success, what comes to mind? Chances are you're not thinking about trials and tribulations, ordeals, trauma, or misery when you think of such people. Some people just seem born to succeed. Some live charmed lives without much in the way of serious challenges or setbacks. They enjoy long vacations and some so exotic locations. They seem to have perfect spouses, perfect children, and live in perfect houses. If that's you, then I congratulate you and am truly happy for you. But you can stop reading this piece now or listening to it. It's not meant for you. Now, here's the thing. I grew up with a disability and was born in 1951. And the laws that guarantee people with disabilities did not change until the late 70s, and the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 is the act that actually talks about accessibility and employment of people with disabilities. But IDEA was passed in 1977 and took effect in 1980. And for the first time, children with disabilities were guaranteed the right to an education. Then in 1990, they passed the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was basically an upgrade from the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. But until and what the ADA or the Americans with Disabilities Act included was a clause that allows someone with a disability who felt they were being discriminated against in the workplace to file a lawsuit. And for many years, I struggled to make an income. And because I didn't have the same mobility as many other people, my business struggled. But with the advent of technology and the Internet, it made it a far more equal playing field, which has given me the opportunity to start earning that income. Welcome to the real world. If you're still listening to this, well, welcome to the real world, or at least a world most of us are more familiar with. In our world, yours and mine, cars break down. Financial difficulties befall us. Health issues arise. Relationships take constant work. And the refrigerator goes out during a heat wave. Or the furnace decides to die just as the weatherman predicts a week of frigid temps. Life can be tough and chaotic. And if you're like most people, You put a lot of effort into reducing the chaos and finding happiness wherever you can. I'm well aware that this is precisely why so many people 
join the Holistic Solution Program. They want less chaos, more peace, and happiness. That's why it can be a little bit of a surprise for some Holistic users to learn that one of the necessary ingredients in creating a life of peace and happiness is the very thing they're trying to avoid. That's right. Chaos is key. But is it chaos bad? Doesn't it equate to stress? Well, yes, but perhaps not the kind of stress that you're thinking of. Psychologists explain that there are really two types of stress. The first is the stress, which is kind of most of us think of when we think of stress. It's the, oh, no, I'm running late to work again kind of stress. Most of us are pretty familiar with this kind of stress, and there's plenty of it to go around. But there's another lesser-known kind of stress and more positive form of stress. It's called eustress. Eustress is what motivates us to get up in the morning, even when we'd rather sleep in. It's what compels us to get to the gym, schedule the appointment with the dentist, or make that difficult phone call. You stress is stress we voluntarily endure for some higher benefit or payoff. In short, you stress is good stress. When people join the Holistic Stress Program, most of them aren't thinking about you stress. They're focused on reducing distress. And as anyone who has used Holosync for a period of time knows, it definitely does reduce distress. But how? How can listening to a couple of carefully combined, discreet, pure tones have such a profound impact on something like stress? In a sense, it does it by adding even more stress. Maybe most of the best marketing strategy for something like Holosync. More stress? Why in the world do I want more stress? No, thank you. Now, back in the 60s and the 20th century, as, as we started to become more open and we started to change our way of thinking, what did we see? We saw things like self-help book, and talked about how to reduce stress by uh, a certain stress redux reductors, or you would listen to, to tapes which would tell you how to, to use the mind and body. You actually see that in yoga today. Where, and, But what the deep relaxation tapes would tell you is Tighten up your hand in such a fit and keep it until you actually feel the stress in your hand as it's balled up. And then just release it. As you're releasing it, you're releasing that tension that your body is feeling. That, and you would do that throughout your body with your hands, your legs, your your, your thought processes, the idea was that you were becoming so relaxed that you were letting go of the stress that you're feeling. Closed and open systems. Well, let me introduce you to a gentleman named Ilya Prigogine. Prigogine uh, uh, Prigog was a Russian physical chemist chemist and Nobel laureate who studied, among many other things, something called dissipative structure. Now, if you're not into science, don't worry. I'm not a scientist either. So I couldn't explain to you Pergogi's work in any real depth, even if I tried. In fact, for the purposes of, of this show, 
I want to zero in on the small part of Pergogi's work that helps explain how holosleep works and how significant improvement in everyday, everyday life occur as well. Pergogi asked us to imagine a world made up of two different kinds of systems, one being open and the other being closed. Closed systems are pretty easy, like tables, forks, bricks, and so on. The chair or the sofa that you may be sitting on right now is a closed system. Closed systems are closed because they are not able to accept the input of the stimulus from outside environment without breaking down in some way. They are small. They're inanimate objects, so they don't feel that you, they don't actually interact with anyone or anything other than there's something for you to use. If we grab a chair and take it outside and leave it in the middle of the field, it will, assuming nobody comes along and moves it. Simply sit there, and over time, it will be exposed to hot sunlight, drenching rain, perhaps some wind and snow, and other elemental factors that eventually wear the chair down. While it receives a lot of input and energy from the environment, the chair can't use that energy to grow or adapt. All it can do is sit there, quietly enduring whatever befalls it, until eventually the chair collapses. If we come back to check on our chair after 100 years, chances are good there won't be much left of it at all. There's a closed system. Remember when they talk about the trash bin and they talked about how you, when you dispose of things, it, even plastic, it doesn't break down for a hundred or more years simply because the comp composition of it is so strong. What about open systems? Imagine that nearby, oh, a poor old worn down chair in the field, there is a tree, maybe an oak or a pine. The tree is exposed to all the same sorts of environmental influences as the chair, the sun, the rain, the wind, and so on. But unlike the chair, the tree is an open system. That means that the tree can take in the forces and energies of these elemental factors and use them as fuel. In fact, the tree requires many of these forces in order to grow without some rain and wind. Every so often, the tree fails to grow, even try to grow a tree in a dark, enclosed room where there is no rain or sun. It might seem like a safe place for the tree, but in such an environment, the tree will die. Now, you see that same thing happening whenever you bring plants into your house. If you forget to water, if you get, forget to feed it, if you forget to nurture it, it dies. Only certain types of plants, like aloe, can thrive in the inside as well as the outside. So what we're going to do now is talk about good stress and show how this stress really works. Perhaps you can see where I'm going with this. You, me, and everyone you know is an open system. We need a certain amount of rain, wind, and sun to grow, according to Bergogin ish reasoning. What we need is a certain amount of chaos. 
as he called it, entropy. And entropy is just a randomized energy. We need the challenges, a few stress. We need a little nudge out of the comfort zone without enough positive stress in our lives. We, like the tree, is a dark room, will wither and die. Now, let's look at that another way. For instance, if you, you need interaction with people, this is why you cannot live, or this is why so many people find it difficult to live alone and need to be around people because they truly feel that without that interaction of people that they will die. And there's a story that comes out of transactional analysis called The Fuzzy Tale. And in that story, there's a mother, there's a father, there's a son, and there's a daughter. And they go around and give out warm fuzzies to everyone and anyone they see. And eventually a witch comes along and she sees this. And she gets very, very jealous. So what does she do? She tells them, if you keep it giving out warm fuzzies, it will, they will run out. So what happens is they stop giving out those warm fuzzies. And then eventually start giving out cold prickles and false fuzzies. And what we're talking about here is the, the positive and the negative reinforcement that you get on a daily basis. And then eventually start seeing the, the, the tail start to shrivel up and die. And then eventually a hip woman comes along and she says to the family that they can keep giving out warm fuzzies because they will no longer or they will never run out. And then all of a sudden when they start giving out warm fuzzies again, the tail starts to, to thrive and grow and and that's the difference in what we're talking about is what's going to make you grow? What's going to give you that, that reinforcement that you need? Holosync is the best tool we know of to introduce to positive, healthy, you stress into an open system of your brain. Feed the brain a little chaos and watch what happens. The brain is remarkably adaptive as recognizing the chaos into something positive. Essentially, the brain is built to turn chaos into order. Simply by listening to Holosync Daily, you can stimulate your brain to grow, adapt, and improve this functioning. And for one more on how pedagogies work on the scientific basis for how Holosync works. Be sure to check out the three holes of the mind, the first book by Centerpoint founder Bill Harris. But even if you're not using Holosync, you can benefit by simply paying more attention to the difference between distress and new stress. In your life, as we've seen, not all stress is negative. Some of it actually helps us grow. A little chaos now and then is just what we need to push the brain to, to do what Prigogi calls a higher order. Unfortunately, we often take a positive eustress experience and turn it into a distressful situation of how we react to it when we get into the habit of complaining, worrying, fretting over positive distress, we're only suffering needlessly. There's plenty of distress to go around, is it fair? So why make things harder by, by fussing over the positive aspects of stress that actually keep us alive and growing. So the next time 
you grumble when the alarm clock goes off or complain about going to the gym, remember that this kind of stress is all part of a larger picture. In fact, if you want to get then about things, all forms of stress and all experience in life are part of a larger picture. In fact, if you want to get zen about things, all forms of stress and all experience in life is part of a larger picture that makes up our reality. Even those potentially distressing experiences might just hold a certain subtle potential of growth. Now, let's talk a little bit about how the brain works. For one thing, we have the, the fight or flight mechanism that kicks into our brain processes or our thought processes when we feel that we're being threatened. Some of it is, is such that you need to learn to deal with it. But here's another thing to think about. The difference is if you have a parent who experiences extreme, extreme stress in their life, such as being in the middle of a thunderstorm and having a tree fall or seeing a tree fall on a car and someone die, then that sticks in their mind and whenever they feel or hear that, it triggers up what they saw when they were out previously. And often a parent can make or give that fear to a child. When they give it to a fear to a child, it's secondary, which means it's a, it's a stress that you can overcome if you understand and learn how to deal with stress. And there's a number of ways to do that. For instance, one of the things is exercise. Just what does exercise do? That literally helps you get rid of stress. It helps you to, to redirect the energy within your body. And now everyone today is experiencing the COVID-19 rise and hearing how there's mutations, and, and finally there's a vaccine out there that's sort of been proven to be successful but still hasn't become widely used to know for sure, and only over time will that help to reduce the stress. So these are the, just the little things that we talk about. If we can manage to learn from them, Spend some time thinking about the things in your life that stress you out. And when you notice yourself applying a distressful response to what is actually a stressful situation, use the opportunity to remember that not all stress is bad. Chaos is fuel for an open system like you. In fact, with chaos, comes a genuine opportunity for change. Don't fear a little chaos now and then. It's the key to in, ingredient to growth. Now, this is the first time that we've actually experienced a pandemic in over 100 years. They learned things from the pandemic of 1918, which was known as the Spanish flu, and they learned that if you put people outside, that it helps to reduce it. Now what we're learning is, and you've seen this with several other situations where, where there were health issues and people started wearing masks, and those masks were very protective, and now we're talking about not only wearing masks, but using um, self-distancing, that you're seeing a reduction in it. 
and then you'll see where people will break quarantine, and, and you'll find thousands of people, or, or, or young people going to places like bars, or, or during the holidays, families congregate together. And what happens is a big outbreak. So that until there's a, a real vaccine that has been proven, then over time, we're going to find that eventually, even as things mutate, even the Spanish flu is still around, but it's mutated so much that it doesn't affect anyone in the same way that this pandemic has hit. You've had the SARS, you've had a few others, and it's just understanding and learning how to incorporate a new way of life. And that new way of life can be very very stressful, especially to people who are used to living a, a certain way and, and don't want to change. Those that are resistant to change are the ones that are finding it the most difficult to adapt to, to the things that they're being told to to look at and the way they're being told to uh, to adapt. And, and, and then some are actually in denial. What you're seeing is because the industrial age put out a lot of carbons. It created a climate change. And unless we actually do something to reduce those carbon monoxides that are being put out into the environment, then we're going to consistently see that change occur. And as that's why you're getting more severe hurricanes when they're coming around. You're, you're getting more severe winters, and you're seeing such an increase that all of these things definitely create and set us up in chaos. So understanding them understanding how to adapt your lifestyle, being willing to adapt, being willing to be more health conscious, being willing to do the things that can help your environment. And instead of denying that those issues are there, that accept them and think of ways that you can can actually incorporate or assist in creating new inventions, because some of us are really creative, but we've got to learn to get beyond those fears, because what happens is those fears are what's keeping us boxed in and keeping us from getting beyond and, and thinking outside the box. And when you learn to think outside the box, when you learn that you can adapt within a chaotic world and make things calmer around you, that you have more control over your life than you think you do. We're so used to, and this happens, that in childhood, what happens? We're very dependent on our parents, and we kind of follow and believe the things they tell us over time because that's what they were taught and that's how we adapt. But as we get older, as we begin to, to think for ourselves, as we begin to learn what happens, we begin to understand how life changes and how we can control and reduce the stress within our lives. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one personal careercoach.com, and I have a course on the laws of attraction that helps to you to think outside the box and learn to control your thinking and also learn how to get beyond those limitations that you put on yourself. 